I started at the BD Biodiversity Museum as a volunteer or museum educator about a year and a half ago. I was fascinated with the blue whale skeleton and also as a marine worm specialist, I was interested in the bone-eating snotflower worm that is on display in the museum as well. And there's a very interesting ecological relationship between those two animals. One might ask, how is that possible with worms living on the bottom of the ocean and the whales generally being at the surface? So when whales die naturally, they fall to the ocean bottom and they create what we call whale falls. And what that means is that the dead animal then becomes a supply of food for many, many organisms at the bottom of the ocean, including the bone-eating worms. Organic material from one whale can amount to as much as 20,000 kilograms of organic matter. Now, a lot of that matter is oily material, obviously oil from the blubber, but also oils and cholesterols within the bones themselves. And that, in fact, is what the bone-eating worms eat. Bone-eating worms were first discovered, actually, in 2002 in Monterey Canyon, just off of Monterey Bay in California. And these worms have basically three body parts. They have a crown with palps through which they get their oxygen. They have a trunk system where there is a heart and muscles. And then they have a root-like structure that is actually buried within the bones of the whale. And in that root-like structure is a large sac called an ovisac, which produces lots and lots of eggs, and a green tissue that covers that ovisac, which actually has a bacteria in it. So the worms actually depend on the bacteria in that root-like structure to produce enzymes to digest the oil and the cholesterol within the bone that not only feed the bacteria, but feed the worm itself. So if the blue whale skeleton in the museum had died a natural death and fallen to the ocean bottom and become one of these whale falls, the bone-eating worm most likely to have eaten those bones would have been the bone-eating snot flower worm. And so this is where the ecological relationship between these two species ties very nicely together because really it's one of life and death. And here we have the bones of one animal supplying food for the bone-eating worms who then are devouring the bones and providing more food for lots of other organisms in the ocean. Another life, another death, and life goes on.